What's up guys, it's Ryder here with my review of Thor Ragnarok. This is the 5th movie of Marvel Phase 3 and the 17th movie, oh my god, of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This is also our 3rd Marvel movie in the MCU this year. And I saw this thing last night and I will blatantly say, I have no shame in saying it, it is my favorite MCU movie of this year. And sure, I, I'm a big Marvel fan, right? I do say I pretty much like all the movies, but this one to me had something special. It, it really has something special to it. We're gonna talk all about it. You know some fans and maybe some just regular people out there in general who might not even be fans of the Marvel movies, we're looking at this thing and they're like, wow, this is very off-put, right? It, it's very much set aside from some of the tone that Marvel's been doing. And yeah, sure, Marvel has a lighter tone, more comedic tones in some of their big blockbustery movies, but this thing, it kind of felt like it almost could have been separated in a way. There's a lot of comedy, a lot of jokes, a lot of different things that we've never really seen with Thor before. And yeah, when I look at this movie, when I sat down to watch it, there are things in there that are different from the first Thor movies and from Age of Ultron. And yeah, it is more comedic, definitely, and the comedy is awesome. But when I look at this, I see the best Thor incarnation, the best Thor movie, and probably the darkest Thor movie that there really is. And you're like, what? That makes no sense! I saw the same thing and it's super light and super fun. And I'm just gonna say it, I know everyone's probably tired of hearing it, but you know what? Fuck it, right? Because this movie is fun. It is fun. I, I will continue to say that until the day I die because this movie's fun and it is. Everyone will say it. But there are a lot of dark elements here and there's a lot of dark themes and the way it's directed, the things that, the way that they place certain moments and certain scenes and certain comedy and certain whatever, it's perfect for me and it works for me. It won't work for everybody. Definitely the jokes won't work for everybody, but some of the more emotional moments in this movie, which there are a lot of emotional moments in this movie, a lot, they really hit hard. The really cool thing though is while I've watched a lot of the trailers, pretty much all of them, and I've even watched some of the TV spots, and I really have analyzed these things. You guys who are subscribed to my channel, you know this. I've broken them down. I've done this video and that video, whatever, okay? So I, I know about the movie, but to be honest, going in, sitting down, I didn't really know what it was going to be about. I just knew some of the big plots, you know, the Planet Hulk, the Hela, the idea of Ragnarok. I knew Surtur was going to be in there somewhere, but to be honest, you don't really know the big plot of it. You don't really know what the, the point of it is. And that was really cool, something that definitely was different from, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy trailers and even the Spider-Man trailer. The basic gist of the movie is that basically, at the basic level, Loki inadvertently has released Hela, figured out a way, not really a intentionally, inadvertently, right, has somewhat released Hela by banishing Odin. Oh, yeah, and FYI, right, definitely gonna be spoilers. There are for sure spoilers in this review. I don't want to spoil this movie because the spoilers are really good, and there's, like, a lot of great moments, so please go see this movie if you want to care or do care about spoilers. That's your warning. Just wanted to put that out there because we're about to get into some pretty big stuff. By banishing Odin, he somewhat loses his life force. Hela is just now released because Odin's been holding her back, and she basically believes believes that she has the right and claim to the throne of Asgard because dun dun duh, she is Odin's firstborn child. She is the sister to Thor and the half-sister to Loki. The whole idea of Asgard as Guardians Odin, it wasn't perfect, it wasn't great overall until, you know, it seems like Hela represented some of the darkness that was in Odin that he kind of cast away and rebuilt on top of that. And we, we do know from the first Thor movie that he has no problem covering up some of the secrets about his children. This sets up the big ideas in this film, and I just, I love Thor in this, and that's something that I, I definitely have liked Thor. I think the character of Thor has been great, but I think he is just amazing in this movie. It makes you really, really connect with the character on so many different levels. At a comedic level, of course, but on a deeper level as well. The opening scene of this film might be one of the best things I've ever seen in the whole MCU. This film definitely has some of my favorite moments that in like the whole entirety of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, it's these moments I will remember forever just from this movie. Certain moments, not everything, but there are so many great things in here. Villain-wise, I thought Hela was really solid villain. I thought they had some really solid buildup for her. 
I would have liked to see some deeper, you know, maybe character journey for her. For the second act, she's not really in the movie. So she's only kind of in the beginning. She's in somewhat a little bit in the middle and then at the end, of course. But there's not a ton of her. But when she is there, she's great. And they did really good things with her. This is a spoiler review, so we can talk spoilers, of course, right? And it does seem like Surtur kills her at the end of the movie. But because we didn't get to see completely a full arc with her, right? We didn't see a complete full arc. And also, you have a massive actress like Kate Blanchett, and you didn't really see the body dead, right? So it does imply that we will be seeing a, a version of her maybe as Lady Death, Mistress Death, or maybe just as Hela again in Avengers Infinity War or Avengers 4. Surtur, I also really liked. I liked what they did with him. They didn't overutilize him. They had There was a lot of opportunities for them to go ahead and do the typical comic book story, comic book, oh, he He's this big, you know, apocalyptic type event that, you know, the hell is going to unleash. They didn't go that route. They had so many opportunities to do it. And any other studio probably would have gone that way. I'll tell you this. Warner Brothers would have gone this way. Fox would have gone this way. Marvel here and Taika Waititi, they decided not to go this way. And they ended up doing some really cool twists and, and some really cool rationales for why Surtur ended up even being there at all. I love the look of Surtur. Sakaar, though. Sakaar was definitely, I think, it was probably the most used location out of the whole film they spend so much time on this planet thor and loki to me have they've already been fully developed i think that we've seen the full development and here you see a more mature version of thor even though he's cracking jokes constantly you know but they're they're mature jokes it's a me it's a mature setting i can't really explain it but you see a maturity level in him when he is on sakar and this kind of weird thing he's doing with loki and they kind of end up playing that out here you know the the all the, the ups and downs of the relationship are played out on sakar the main point of Sakaar for me, though, is watching, and I think in general the reason they went this way, is to set up Hulk and to set up Valkyrie, two amazing characters in this movie. If you were going into this and you were looking forward to seeing Mark Ruffalo constantly, that's actually not the case because most of the film, I'd say the most Hulk, the more of the, the character of Hulk, Bruce Banner, is Hulk, right? It's shown by Hulk. And while you can say, you can definitely make the argument that Thor Ragnarok feels like it's so out there, so different from the MCU, right? It, it doesn't almost fit as a puzzle piece that builds to Infinity War. The argument I will make, and I think that very well can be made, is that the Hulk, even though it's a little bit out there as well, it really grounds it in some of the things they were doing with the Quinjo, what they were doing with Black Widow. Yeah, there's some Black Widow stuff in this as well. You have the whole thing with Tony Stark's clothes. And just those references, and while some people will be like, oh, well, they didn't have to put that in there, you're right. But again, it grounds it more in the sense of, okay, this feels like it could have and definitely did take place right after Age of Ultron. The Hulk arc that Mark Ruffalo has been talking about, it really seems like it's going to be interesting watching this play out. The idea that Hulk is seeming like he's taking control and that he's not going to let Banner become Banner again. And that's something that we do see that somewhat happens. Another character that I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed, I'll talk about Valkyrie in a second, but I really enjoyed this character and that was Scourge the Executioner. I really thought they just brought Carl Urban in there for a name right to, to attach to this character and then i thought they just brought the executioner character in there to give the hella character a little bit of some you know bodyguard right some some muscle all right valkyrie so and valkyrie was definitely one of the big gems of this film along with hulk you know of course like i was saying earlier sakar was really a planet that was used for thor was used for loki but it was mainly used to develop hulk and valkyrie now, this was a different approach a different take on valkyrie but i absolutely loved it another great story arc it had it its darker moments it had its more intense moments and for those times those periods in the film they nailed it for me i just want to touch upon odin really quick so yeah definitely you know characters like odin and the warriors three they die in this and they are you can say you could argue that they're glossed over and, and throughout the film you see it always when you know thor's about to uh go ahead and use his lightning powers but you always see you always see this image of odin kind of just popping up in front of thor and it just it, i don't know why but it just drives this emotion through me look definitely this movie is an offshoot from some of the other things we've seen marvel do before at the same time though it feels at home i really wish some of the other thor movies had looked like this especially the second one but in the end you know it honors some of the things that the first two set up it also destroys some of those things and i think that's what's necessary the way things were executed in this the directing the the visual style the 
script, the characters. It made for an amazing movie. Let me know your guys' thoughts on Thor Ragnarok. What are you expecting from other future incarnations of Thor? Are they going to go female Thor? Let me know. Thank you so much for watching. And yeah, there were post credit scenes and a ton of Easter eggs. So I'll be having some separate videos coming out for that shortly. So be subscribed to get that. Thank you so much for watching. And I'm Ryder signing off with Infinite Attitude. And fuck yeah, this was a good movie. Yeah,